Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is the third day of Hidden Figures, and today's hidden figure is Rose Mita Morgan, better known as Rose Morgan, who was the owner and operator of the largest beauty parlor in New York for Black American women. She was also among the founders of New York's only Black-owned commercial bank, the Freedom National Bank. Born in Edward, Mississippi in 1912, Rose Mita Morgan followed the business example of her father, an industrious sharecropper named Chattel Morgan. This is spelled C-H-A-P-T-L-E, so I'm assuming that it's chattel and not chaptel, but you guys let me know if you know. She began making artificial flowers and convincing neighborhood children to sell them door-to-door -door at 10 and started styling hair for friends and neighbors at 12. By age 14, her ability to do hair had become a flourishing business. I've always had a great imagination, she said, and I could do things with my hands. Clients would arrive at her house at 5.30 or 6 a.m. to get their hair done before work, and once her customer base grew, she decided to attend cosmetology school to get her license. After attending Morris School of Beauty in Chicago, Morgan rented a booth in a neighborhood salon and began doing hair full-time. In 1938, she styled the hair of singer, actress, and vaudeville star Ethel Waters when Waters had a singing engagement in Chicago and impressed her so much that Morgan was invited to New York City as Waters' special guest. Morgan fell in love with New York. I had never seen people dressed up like these people were dressed up, she said in a 1988 video interview for the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in Harlem. Their hair was beautiful. Everybody was just gorgeous, I said. Oh, this is the place for me. She moved to the city, working out of the kitchen of a friend who owned a dress shop before renting a booth in a Sugar Hill salon with Ethel Waters as a star client. Within six months, Morgan had established enough customers to open her own beauty shop, and after meeting Olivia Clark, a skincare specialist with degrees in biology, Clark and Morgan teamed up to offer high-quality skin and hair care to Black women. Deciding to open a full-service salon, they scouted and then bought a property on Sugar Hill that had been vacant for nearly 20 years and was said to be haunted. Morgan signed a 10-year lease on the dilapidated mansion, and on May 6, 1945, Rose Morgan opened the salon with a grand ceremony in which the Reverend Adam Clayton Powell Jr. cut the ribbon himself. As someone that has lived in Harlem, I just can never hear, like, Adam Clayton Powell's name? Harlem. That's it. <laughs> News traveled fast about Morgan's technique, and she became known for using less hair product to achieve a softer, bouncier feel in clients' hair. By 1946, the Rose Mita House of Beauty spanned an entire five floors and had a staff of 29, including 20 hairstylists, three massage therapists, skincare specialists, and a registered nurse. A 1946 Ebony Magazine article named it the biggest Negro beauty parlor in the world. Rose Mita was described as an oasis that signaled elegance and calm for black women in a world that was more accustomed to being pampered by black women than pampering them. Formality and respect for clients was a huge part of the experience at Rose Mita, as the policies were meant to supplement a popular culture where black people were purposefully not addressed with respect. So they went out of their way to call people like, sir, ma'am, Mrs. Smith, you know, not calling people by their first names. This was like not allowed in Rose Morgan's salon. You were literally not allowed to call people by their first names because white people love calling black people for our, by our first names to, you know, infantilize us and disrespect us. Oh, hey, boy, girl, and then call you by your first name. This is something that they um, showed a lot in Hidden Figures. They would not call any of the black women by their last name. Everybody else was Mrs. Smith or Mr. This or that, but oh, Catherine, Catherine Johnson is, oh, that's just Catherine over there, you know? So the fact that, you know, she really pressed formality in her beauty parlor was to give these black women, you know, again, a sense of calm and a sense of respect. In 1955, the facility was renovated, expanded, and reopened under a new name, Rose Morgan's House of Beauty, with additional departments, including dressmaking and charm school. A wig salon was added in 1960. And the expansion was a huge success cementing Rose Morgan's House of Beauty as a household name at that time. 
Over her career, Morgan trained thousands of hairdressers, and throughout the 1960s, Morgan also wrote a column for the New Pittsburgh Courier in addition to running Morgan's House of Beauty. In the 60s, she also expanded into her own full line of cosmetics, as well as staging large-scale fashion and hair shows, which were held in venues like the Renaissance Ballroom and Casino or the Rockman Palace. Models showed off Morgan's signature hairstyles and makeup, which she developed and sold herself as most makeup companies at the time did not make products for people with darker skin. Rose Morgan Cosmetics offer, excuse me, offered popular face powder and other makeup in three shades, peach, honey, and brown. She invested her own time and money into developing the cosmetics and fashion shows, which were precursors to the hugely popular and influential black hair and fashion shows of the 70s and 80s, and thousands of people attended her events. All the girls loved the shows because there was nowhere else that they could show themselves off like the high fashion models, she told Essence magazine. The profits from these events, along with the sales from the salon, gave her the opportunity to expand her operation even more, even to Europe, where she sailed on the Queen Mary to advertise her products. Despite the success of her enterprise and expansions, including banking more than $3 million in financial institutions, Morgan often had challenges securing even small business loans because of her race. I had banked with Manufacturers Trust for 10 years, she said in a 1988 video interview. I went to them and tried to borrow some money for business and couldn't get a dime. To combat racism in finance, Morgan decided to get into banking herself, and in 1964, she started Freedom National Bank, the only commercial bank for Black Americans in New York. Baseball player Jackie Robinson was also an early founder and investor, but unfortunately, the bank eventually folded. She married heavyweight boxer Joe Lewis in 1955, catapulting her to the top of Black American social society and causing considerable media scrutiny, but the marriage was annulled three years later. Morgan retired in the 1970s and sold her New York salon, returning to Chicago where she died on December 16, 2008. She was 96. Rose Morgan is featured in Bayer Mac's 2019 documentary, No Lie, an American beauty story that chronicles the rise and decline of the Black-owned ethnic beauty industry. I have not seen this documentary, but I would love to watch it. So if any of you have seen it or could get your hands on a copy, please let me know in the comments. And my final quote, I never denied myself anything, she said. I traveled all over the world. I did all the things I wanted to do. Rose Morgan, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.